Hello, I'm Nan Simonson, and today I'm making an Icarian longevity stew. And it's something that I got from this book, The Blue Zones Challenge, from this book, The Blue Zones Kitchen, which were both an offshoot of this book, Dan Butner's The Blue Zones. Nine Lessons for Living Longer. And you know what? Some people tongue-in-cheek say, well, if I don't get to eat everything I want to eat, then I don't want to live longer. That's very funny until a person is miserable when they're slogging through all kinds of lifestyle-based chronic illnesses like diabetes and stroke in some cases and cardiovascular disease and dementia, those things in many cases can be avoided by some choices that we can make. And that's what Dan Butner studied in the Blue Zones. So let me get back to my soup because I want to get it started. This soup is loaded with what I believe in. Here's one more book, my book, Aging Powerfully. And my premise when I wrote this book just before I turned 70, which was a year ago, I'm a couple of weeks away from 71, was that if we can deliciously, joyfully, happily amend our lifestyle and remain healthy, I'm about to run my second 10K. My last one was October 24th. And I ran a 10K, which is 6.2 miles. I was fourth in my division of ages 70 to 74. And I had never run before. I decided in July I'd give it a try and ran in October. Here it is, uh, close to January, I'm gonna run again. A 71-year-old who takes up running and loves it because I'm not bogged down with the rheumatoid arthritis that they diagnosed three years ago and the pre-diabetes that they diagnosed and the high cholesterol that they diagnosed, all wanting to medicate. And I said, no, I'll do it with food. And they said, you can't. I went whole food, plant-based, low processed oils, meaning all oils, and even olive oil, I choose to stay away from. I like being on the slimmer side and I can do that easily by having massive amounts of whole foods and minor amounts of things that are concentrated like oil, which is 4,000 calories a pound and I can eat broccoli, a pound of broccoli for 100 calories. So I'm not gonna get into caloric density, but let me start my soup. This is a hot pan and I brought up the oil because this recipe, and this is where I, diver uh, I diverge with the recommendations in the blue zones they pour olive oil on everything olive oil is a a um, monounsaturated fat is it mono or poly polyunsaturated fat or is it a mono shoot see huh i'll get back to you on the second part of this video with the facts and um even then it doesn't like high heat I don't know why so many people haven't realized that the heat, the, the what they call smoke point of an oil is where it starts to break down. Smoke point of olive oil is 375 calories. You high saute and you're breaking down the olive oil, which is supposed to be giving you those small amounts of antioxidants that you can get just by eating olives or any other number of whole foods. So you're going to see an empty pan here, even though the recipe called for four tablespoons. I saw one recipe in here that called for a half a cup. That's eight tablespoons of oil. One that called for three quarters of a cup in here. No, thank you. Not just for the calories, but for no. Coat your tongue. You can't even taste your food. So back again, Nan. Rain it in. I'm putting in, and I'm doubling what the recipe called for because my philosophy has always been if I'm going to mess up the kitchen, mess it up mightily by simply doubling things and having twice the amount of food in the freezer. So 
that I would otherwise. I love going to my freezer and simply picking things off the shelf, and I can go two, three days simply with these defrosted stews and soups, <laughs> soups, stews and soups, curries and chilies. Last night we had a haystack kind of taco meal where we had the crispy bottom. I have a baked corn tortilla shell from a brand called Diero, 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 Diermo. Um, I don't know if it's local, so, and I don't know where you live, so I'm not saying that you can get it, but you can bake your own in the oven rather than fry them. There isn't, there aren't very, and I was going to say there isn't a fast food, processed food, um, non-whole food that isn't loaded with processed oils. And those processed oils, I had a friend just write me about this and ask about the inflammatory nature of the uh, uh, excess omega-6 um, fatty acids that so many of us have in our diet. Um, they come from these processed oils and you can't find processed food without a bunch of oil. There was something, oh, I was looking at something yesterday in a health food store. It was, Mushroom jerky, doesn't that sound good? That savoriness of a jerky, that, that texture of a jerky, but made with mushrooms. I thought, oh boy, oh boy. I looked at the ingredients, the recipe, or the, the serving size, whatever it was, uh, 30 grams or something like that, maybe, yeah, 30 grams, uh, was 130 calories and it had something like 10 grams of fat. That didn't come from mushrooms. Mushrooms don't have that kind of fat. That was all added oil. So they took a perfectly good premise and they ruined it with processed oils that cause a spike of the omega-6s, a dominance of omega-6s over threes. The entire thing becomes an inflammatory food. You know what? I didn't mean to do any of this. I just meant to cook you some soup. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't help myself. Now, that pan was an empty pan. I threw in two big onions. They were supposed to be red onions. I only had one red, the other one's white. Doesn't matter. Taste is a tiny bit different, still good. And this is starting to brown. Well, one of the ways that I can increase that browning is to sort of bubble up the little bit of the juice of the onion that sticks to the pan. And especially when you're using a broth for deglazing, I could have done it with water, it bubbles up, it cooks away very quickly. And I get from that a beautiful um, additional uh, flavor of that caramelized um, onion uh, essence because onions are much more moist than a lot of the alliums. For example, if I had used leek, leek is a lot less moist than just a globe onion. And I still do it uh, without oil, but I add a little bit more broth. Okay, I'm going to throw in here, as this is cooking down, I'm going to throw in here Garlic, and I wouldn't put garlic all by itself because garlic doesn't have a lot of moisture. It tends to brown. It tends to burn. Any garlic or, yeah, garlic that, that browns is going to be um, bitter. Garlic browns bitter. Uh, but I can put it in with the protective juices of the onion and just let it kind of wheat. I'm going to add to that a couple of globes of, um, of fennel. I wish I had saved one of these to show you, but I don't have another to show you. This is two globes of fennel. Fennel, if you see it in the store, just looks like kind of like this, like a globe with a little bit of the fronds on the top of it, sometimes a lot of fronds. And it's like a the root, no, nah, it's not like the root of celery. Celery root is real knobby. Uh, pretty little thing. Well, 
I shop at Trader Joe's near me. They have a package of two for a great price. Uh, depending on where you go, you can get them at farmer's markets. And so this is a Ikaria, Ikarian longevity soup. Ikaria is one of the five blue zones that Dan Butner recognized as having the longest lived healthy populations in a community in the world. There are five that were identified. Ikaria, Greece, is one of them. It's an island um, in the, um, uh, around the, the um, other Greek islands. And there's Okinawa, another island uh, off of the south coast of Japan. And that has the longest living population of women, but overall the longest living healthy population of centenarians. Those are people over 100 who are still walking to neighbors' homes, making their meals, living on their own, watching grandkids. Um, and the Nicoya Peninsula of Costa Rica. And let's see, we have Icaria. Oh, Sardinia, Italy. The Nicoya Peninsula. Um, Italy. Nicoya Peninsula, uh, Okinawa, and then for the fifth, we have Loma Linda, the Seventh Day Adventist population of Loma Linda, California. I live in California, in Southern California. I am 15 minutes from that area of Southern California, and that group live an average of 10 years longer than people in their surroundings outside of that belief system. They are primarily vegetarian and vegan. They are whole food, plant-based, as are all of the Blue Zones, but they're not plant-exclusive necessarily. That means that they may have um, meat, they may have cheese, um, they may have uh, pork, but they have them in a celebratory way, a little bit, nothing like what we have. They'll have a three ounce piece of meat maybe once a week at a wedding, whereas we have meats and cheeses and, and pork and fish uh, three times a day in many cases. Your cheese on your omelet, your eggs for breakfast, um, meat for lunch, meat for dinner. I'm going on three years at whole food, plant-based, and um, I'm healthier, healthier than ever. Those things that I listed earlier, they're gone. And um, all my health ma ma uh, markers are stellar. So, back to the soup. I have now a nice browning going on. I have it on high heat. This pan is all pledge. You want a nice, strong, uh, by strong, I mean a well welded pan, get a quality pan. Stainless steel is preferred because it's lightweight. You don't want to use old-fashioned Teflon, even though there are some non-stick surface pans that are excellent now. All Clad makes a good one. Um, Scan Pan makes a good one that don't off-gas. And I'm letting this get soft. It has the onion, the garlic, as well as the um, uh, fennel. And now I'm going to add okay, I'm going to add a little bit of salt. This is a half a teaspoon. That's almost nothing. You may want to go without salt if you are dealing with any kind of cardiovascular um, situation because salt retains water in our cells and it makes it harder for your blood to get through and do what it needs to do um, to your organs. It tends to draw water in. Now, let me tell you about a bean I'm going to add to this. I am adding, and I could have just gotten it out of this can, S and W beans, and I got this from Vaughn's. S&W Beans has a series called an heirloom series. I could have used cannellini beans. They're easy to find. That's the white kidney bean. Um, I liked 
the look of this. I thought they were delicious. These are organic. I prefer to buy as many of my foods as possible organic. I'm going to add a little bit more broth. I'll just pour some in. I don't want it to burn. I want it to deglaze, and I want it to brown lightly to give it, again, that caramelized flavor. Okay. And I found at a Whole Foods store, not Whole Foods Market, but Whole Foods store, well, I found this organic yellow eye beans. And that's what was in that can. So I bought pounds of them. I'm crazy about beans. Dan Butner recommends that we eat at least a half to one cup of beans every single day. He said those five blue zones are all dependent on legumes and beans. The Okinawans have a equal affinity, if not a greater affinity, to a potato, a sweet potato, but it's the purple flesh sweet potatoes. And then this is the bean once it was um, soaked and cooked. What I do is I go ahead and cook my beans. I prefer, even though I can get them easily this way, I like to get my beans, cook them myself, make a big quantity. So part of this, this is one pound, I cooked a couple of pounds. Part of this is going to go in, well all of this is, but part of that pan will go in here. And then I will use the beans, kept the broth for them, and I'll use them in other recipes. So I have one pound of cooked beans. And remember, you're going to see something different on your recipe because I've doubled this recipe. This is going to be our dinner tonight. We have someone coming over. And then it will go into the freezer, but I'll keep some for a meal about four or five days from now. So it's an easy way to eat and absolutely delicious. I'm going to add to this some tomato paste. And let me see if there was anything else. Oh, I'm going to add, it'll be after I turn the camera off because I left it at the other end of the kitchen. I'm going to add to this a can of tomato, um, chopped diced, organic chopped diced tomato. The recipe called for two at, when I'm doubling it, finely diced fresh tomato. And instead I'm just going to throw in a can and I'm going to cover what I have here, and you can see, I have a beautiful combination of these foods. There'll be some tomato in there. I'm going to put enough broth and water. That was it for my broth. I'll add more. Now, some people, because this is called Icarian Longevity Stew, some people like a stew. In other words, what I would be showing you later when I show you the finished product would be a bowl of just a chunky stew without a, without a lot of um, broth. I happen to love a brothy soup. I love the broth on its own, a few spoons full of that, as well as the chunky food uh, in it. And um, so I'm adding more water. So I'm covering the beans with about an inch of broth. I'm going to let this cook until, because when I cooked the beans, I didn't cook them all the way. They still had a bit of crunch to them because I knew I was going to cook them in a number of different recipes. And I'll be back to you in a bit to show you the end product of the soup once it's been cooked. I'll talk to you in a bit. Hello. Well, the soup is finished. It's just beautiful. I've tasted it. It's so wonderful. What I didn't do when you were on the first time is I didn't add the bay leaf that was part of the recipe. You can find bay leaf dry at the store. I grow my own. The genus of this plant is Laurus nobilis. You can 
look for a one gallon pot or have them order you a one gallon pot. Usually it comes in fives so that you can plant it as a tree. Ultimately, it's a 40 to 50 foot tree, high and wide. You don't want that. They're a big brawny thing. I keep mine a bush. So I started growing it out of a one gallon pot and I keep it to about three feet, four feet and keep it narrow. And I just pull off my fresh bay leaves. Um, so I put in here, remember I doubled, so the recipe called for two, I put in four. It also called for a bunch of dill at the end I didn't have fresh dill. It's not the season for fresh dill now. So I simply used oregano. I just used my dry oregano. That is a flavor of the Greek island, so that's fine. And you can see that I have my bay leaf that I'll be pulling out. We don't serve that to people, but it's really easy to see and very easy to pull out. I have an arrangement here because I'm about to do a Seventh Day Adventist big batch soup, this big vegetable and, and lentil soup. So I'm going to do that as soon as I finish this, but I just wanted to show you what this looks like. A couple of big, beautiful spoonsfuls. Oh, nice. You can see the beans in here. I'm going to highlight it. Now I could put more broth. I could leave it more stewy. I'm gonna put some fronds from the fennel here to decorate it. And look, isn't that nice? Nothing like a warm bowl of soup on what's going to be a rainy week. Have a great day because I know I'm going to take very good care of yourself. Fall in love with the healthy food and let that become the natural choice for you.